Hi folks, here are 10 Fusion 360 cam tricks that I bet you didn't know. Trick number one, take a look at the cam samples. Everybody has these and these are actually an incredible resource. If you want to learn more, experiment, take a look at styles of cam, especially on say 3D parts. These are a great resource. I happen to be partial to this plasma example right here. Uh, but this file I've got to open here is one example and take a look. You can see their style of parallels and contours and ramping and so forth. One of the things that can be frustrating is if you want to say look at something from the right pro profile. We've got the view cube and we can orient it like so. You can drag your mouse around. But what if we want to look straight onto this plane right here? Come down to this little TV thing with a saw blade on top of it. Look at, click it once and now come up here, click this face. You've now oriented yourself toward that face. I love a lot of these 3D operations. Sometimes, especially the adaptives, can take a long time to process or to compute. And if you don't want to lose them, let's say you've got to go back into the model side, the CAD side, and change something, but you don't want this to have to recalculate, right click and choose protect. That will now stay locked in. <clears throat> now, of course, if you change the CAD, it's going to be the sort of old toolpath. So buyer beware here, but still a very useful thing. We've had a few of those 10, 20 minute cam adaptive tool paths. It's great, but they can take a while. You want to lock them down. On that note, these are great samples. Let's say I want to pull in the parallel contour ramp and scallop for my own file. and I don't want to worry about how to memorize or copy over all the settings. Just right click, store as a template. I'll call it John Demo. And now in another file, I'll duplicate my setup, delete everything out of it, and I'll right click, create from template, John Demo. These are now, whoops, activate my new setup here. Create from template. Those tool paths, every single preference in it, the tools, everything have been automatically brought over just an awesome way to leverage uh, work that you've already done. Tip number five, take a look at this parallel toolpath running over this boss. Looks good, but let's say we only wanted to work on this left side and right side, not the center. I don't want to go in and create sketches to restrain or constrain or restrict the area. Do this, right click, edit, second tab, geometry, avoid touch surfaces, Click, I set my center surface, click OK. Boom. Number six, let's say you like the uh, parallel and you like this parallel, but you want to understand what are the differences between the two. Click on the first one, hold down Control, click on the second one. Now right click, compare and edit. You now have in the first column the option to edit every feature or you can edit just or view the first op and the second op. They're color coded where there's differences, which is just awesome. For instance, the, you can see we just turned on avoid touch services right here. We can search for things. If we take a look at say step over, we could pull up every instance of step over, or we can just scroll down through here and again look. Okay, so machine steep areas was one of the differences selected, and it's about it between those two really powerful way to debug, to compare, to get the toolpath that you're looking for. Sometimes we can go into an old file and say, man, I really like that toolpath. What did I do to get it? Creating a template's a great way, like we just mentioned. Also compare and edit. I love doing adaptive strategies, and obviously we want to ramp in, which Fusion does normally quite well. But let's say we want to improve that red spiral. Take a look. Edit our tool. Actually, unprotect it first. Edit. On the last tab, linking, ramp, taper, angle, let's make that 20 degrees. This is now going to helically ramp in in a tapered cone shape. That's going to help with chip evacuation. It's going to help get coolant in there. It's going to help make a better cut, better tool life, probably a better part. I think that's pretty cool. Number eight, relative size stock. Right click my setup, edit. You can see they're using it here. I thought that this was pretty stupid because if you changed your CAD model, your stock's going to change. But if your stock's already been cut, well, that doesn't make any sense. Here's what this was meant for. If you put a value in roundup to nearest, let's say 0.5 inches, 
it's going to take your part subject to knowing we need at least 40 thousandths to clear off all the sides and it's going to tell you to go get a piece that's 21 by 5 by 3.5 inches long so the idea is that it's matching your cam and your stock to what you probably have over on the material rack i get it simulation the bar down here is your friend i actually don't even hit play that much anymore I like to jump around because I can click in here and scrub left and right, backward and forward. I can see some relevant information in the gray box above it. I can skip ahead. It's just, it's great. Back here, you can see we've got some errors. If I hover over the error, it even tells you the way this is modeled. We've got a shaft colliding with the stock. We scroll back here, it seems to be the same error. So I probably need to take a look at how that tool is modeled or how it's being held. So use the scrub along the bar down here at the bottom. All right, last tip, number 10, simulation. It's a great tool. I love simulation. I use it all the time. There's one thing I want you guys to do before you go over to the machine, which is jump all the way to the end and see up here with a light bulb for your CAD, toggle that off. What can happen is the CAD model, in this case right here, can backstop your part. And this happens to show it pretty obviously because we see the gray from the file. Sometimes it's not always so obvious. By turning that off, we only see what's left from the simulation. And if you had been staring at this model for a while, you might notice that, hey, we picked a drill that's too large for that hole, and it's a good way to catch it. We've had it happen before. If you had a height plane incorrectly and you happen to wrap it through the stock, you might not catch it in the simulation because it would, uh, again, the CAD model will be backstopping it. Of course, you should have an error down here that you should pay attention to as well. But just one little trick, easy to do, help you make good parts. Hope you guys enjoyed. Take care. See you next Friday. Did anybody know all 10? If so, post in the comments below. I'd be, I'd be awesome if you did. But again, hopefully you learned something new.